Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll be sharing the secrets of how I compress my PDFs for great quality at a fraction of the original export size. In a previous video, I made very quick mention of how I use a non-affinity publisher way to compress files. And from the comments and mails I've received asking about how I do it, it seems you're curious. Before I share my method, I should mention that Affinity Publisher has a range of export options in various formats. PDF is the one I tend to use most frequently. And the PDF export itself has a range of specific export presets. Nine to be precise. For print, press ready, digital small size, digital high quality, export, flatten, and some PDFX specific exports. You're also able to make your own custom presets. Now, how I look at it is that all of the options available in Affinity Publisher fall into two distinct categories of options. First of all, there's the features supported in the PDF export itself. So, do you want clickable links? Do you want bookmarks? Do you want password protection? Then there's options related to the file size. Large file size gives great quality. Smaller file size with compressed images, lower quality. Now, I only concern myself with the first of those groups of options in Affinity Publisher, because as I mentioned previously, I compress the resulting PDF in a different way. And that different way is an app called PDF Optim. It's available for macOS, iOS and Windows. And my workflow is I export an initial PDF from Affinity Publisher. I then open that PDF in PDF Optim. And then in PDF Optim, I use the features in there to compress the PDF and save a second copy that is much smaller. The app itself is free to download and it costs between $4.99 and $9.99 for a lifetime license. There's no affiliation between me and them. I just use the app. The main reason that I use the app is the ability to see the effect of the settings before I commit to using them. And the preview is almost instant, unlike Affinity Publisher, which is somewhat slow at generating a preview and doesn't provide a visual comparison at all. So let's see the whole process. I have one of my completed files open. This is an ebook that I've created sharing some secrets for Affinity Photo on the iPad. That's the front cover. It also has a table of contents. It has an introduction page and then it has pages of content. Now, it's very image heavy. This every page has an image, at least one. Some have more than that. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, there are 23 content pages and a back cover on it as well, which also has an image. This file in Affinity Publisher format is 187 meg. The first task here is to export this to PDF. File export, and you can see what I mean about generating a preview. It'll have a rare old think about it. Now, what I've already got selected is my PDF digital high quality, which is 300 DPI. I'm going to export all of the pages. Oh, it's finally finished its preview. And then I have all of the options. Now, I have not changed any of these from the default. And you can see the problem with this and it's off generating the preview again. We could be here some time with that. So, as I say, I don't bother concerning myself with it in the slightest. All I do is export it. Now, just before I save the PDF, you can see the Affinity Publisher file there at 187.3 meg. And I am going to save this out as a PDF. It will take a few seconds. There are over 20 pages in it. And as I say, they are very graphics heavy. But we are now there. And in the finder, we can see that that PDF is now 84.7 meg. And what I'm going to do is open that with PDF Optim. This is what the app looks like on macOS. Across the top, we have the tools. And then below that, we have a thumbnail track. You are able to batch process files in here. And if you have more than one that you're working on, you will find them in that thumbnail track area. Obviously, at the moment, I only have the one. So what we're seeing on the left hand side of the screen is the original file at 84.7 meg. And on the right hand side, we're seeing the compressed version at a much reduced 3.4 meg. Quality wise, 
you can hardly tell the difference. There is a slight difference in colour, but there is a huge difference in file size. So what you're able to do with this dual pane view is scroll and see beyond the cover page. So there's the table of contents. And going down, second page of the table of contents, my introduction, and then you get into the content that has images in it. Now, before we get to the images, let's have a look at this page, which is just text and my signature graphic. Now, what I'm going to do here is zoom in. And you can see in here, as I'm moving, I can move left to right and up and down, and I can do a complete comparison. And in terms of vector content, there's absolutely no difference in quality. So all I'm going to be concerned about with a file like this is what quality of compression I want to put on the images for a trade off between the file size and the final quality of the file. So what I'm going to do in my comparison here is go back and compare the pages and move down to where we have an image. Now, at the moment, this is using a medium compression. How do I know that? Well, over on the right hand side, we have two sections. We have the compression options at the top and the destination options at the bottom. By default, both of those are open. Within the compression options, you have automatic and you have manual. I always use the automatic one. I get great output with it. I've never really had the need to go manual with it. But in the auto, you have low compression, which gives you a bigger file size. Medium compression, which to me is the happy medium. I can get a very small file size, but a great quality of image. Then there's high compression, which will give you a smaller file still and extreme compression. So if I change that from medium to high, it refreshes its preview. And in terms of text, and the numbered points it doesn't look any different. It starts to look different when you zoom in and you're focusing on the image. So you can see on the left hand side, the word persona, you can read it clearly on the right hand side, way less clear to read. But look at the file size, 1.8 meg. Now, I don't need it that small at all, so I'm quite happy with medium. But we'll just see the extreme, which is extreme. It actually makes it black and white. But then again, Depending on what you're intending to do with this, that could be absolutely fine for you. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the rest of the graphic is also black and white, but it's perfectly usable. And then there's the low compression, which will give you a bigger file size, but better quality in terms of the images. And even that has managed to reduce it by 93.4%. And the file is now only 5.6 meg. So if we zoom in a little bit to that, it's very hard to tell the difference. I'm going to stick with my medium compression. I'm quite happy with medium compression. And let's go back and see the page width and carry on looking down this file. Really, I tend to check two or three pages. If two or three pages look fine, then the rest will probably look fine as well. But you can actually do that. And then something like this with a colour image in it, if you were to choose extreme compression, that image would also be black and white. But it's a very tiny file size. Right, so I'm going for medium compression. But if it's important to you that you have complete control over every aspect of this, you can opt for a manual setting. Within here, you can choose a filter type of graphics or quartz. So this is set to graphics at the moment. You can see there are a range of presets available. It doesn't look bad quality. Uh, the JPEG is set to 70% at 200 and there's other information in there. So it's telling you what space you have saved. I'm going back to the auto, back to medium compression. The only thing I need to do in here is actually export the file. Now, what I'm going to do is choose to replace the original. Before I replace my original file, I'm actually going to make a copy of it, which I am going to name original, and then we can compare the two. Back in here, all I need to do is export. And it's telling me that it's completed that successfully. So let's go to the finder and have a look at it. At the top, we now have my original PDF that came directly from Affinity Publisher at 84.7 meg. And then we've got my medium compression one, which is reporting to be 3.4 meg. Let's open that up and have a look. And this is the final file.
I think the front cover looks absolutely fine. The vector content of text will look fine. So let's head down to the graphics and see how they look. Definitely manageable. And for the difference in file size, I can live with that. I absolutely can. As I mentioned, there are additional benefits in terms of batch processing in PDF Optim, but also you can create output that's consistent in terms of file size between applications. So I can get the same quality output from Affinity Publisher, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, or Pages, Numbers and Keynote, or Word, Excel and PowerPoint. There are many other applications and services that will do a similar job. I've just found PDF Optim to be reliable and easy to use, so I've stuck with it for the last few years. Let's have a quick recap. For digital output, I export to digital high quality, which ensures my hyperlinks are clickable. Then I open that PDF with PDF Optim. I find medium compression is a good trade-off between the file size and the quality. In the example file, the file size was reduced by just under 96%. Then all you need to do is save the file. And the size difference makes the difference between being able to email a file and overload the recipient's inbox. PDF Optim works on macOS, iOS and Windows. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.